Welcome to the Corporate Knights Podcast. In this episode, we interview NHL heavy hitter Georges Larac in the parking lot of an organic market in Prosar, Quebec. At 6 foot 3 and 245 pounds, Larac is a model of strength and is known as a tough guy among his teammates for starting fights and winning them. But he is also known for having a soft spot for animals. Larac is one of the only vegan players in the NHL. I didn't find it tough because, to me, I did it for three big reasons. Compassion of animals, health, and the environment. Just three big reasons to give it up. When you have conviction, compassion, and you see that and it's affecting you, why would you not want to give that up? A lot of people say, well, tradition, tradition, they've been doing it for so many years. Well, tradition changes. Back in the days, women couldn't vote. There's a tradition. We, they can vote. Now, could they vote today? Hell yeah. Things change. Society evolves. Lorac hopes to quicken the evolution towards a more sustainable society. He advocates a vegan diet and speaks passionately about animal rights and environmental stewardship. But his beliefs are often met with criticism because of his reputation for violence on the ice. Stupidest question that some people ask me, what you're doing is not right because you beat up people and what do you have to talk about animals or whatever, because that's something people say all the time. Animals don't stand in line to get slaughtered, to get killed. They don't stand in line to get cut up and stuff to finish in, in, in a plate to be eaten. But when I fight someone on the ice, I fight a millionaire, something that makes quite a lot of money for it, something that is willing, Somebody that does the same job as I do and someone that's an entertainer. So you can't compare. Gloves on or off, Lorac fights for his beliefs. His tenacity for the greater good has led him to several charities, including a recent effort to raise $5 million to rebuild a children's hospital in Haiti. My parents were born there, my mom poor Prince, and they came to Montreal when they were 20 years old. So I feel really lucky that I was born here because if I were born in Haiti, I could have been dead. So I was trying to think of a way to, to do something to really help out people in Haiti. Because Haiti needs people not just for a quick visit, they need people there for a long time. So we're raising money to rebuild that hospital, which is going to be about three million. But hopefully we can raise closer to five to make it bigger to help out the people. Lorac recently moved into the political sphere becoming a member of the Green Party of Canada. Is there a future for Lorac in politics? He doesn't rule it out. For him, anything is possible. You know what, this stuff that I do today, that I never thought that, that, that I would have never thought that it would have went that way. You know, I dream all my life to be in the NHL when I was a kid, and when you're a kid, black kid, less than 0.001% chance to make it, I made it. Somebody would have told me one day that I would have been an animal activist and I would go to protest and stuff. I would have been pretty surprised. I probably would have said, oh, I doubt it. Somebody would have told me that I would have been a member of a political party when I started playing hockey. When I was 20 years old, I was eating meat that I was ignoring and I didn't care about anything, the environment. I had to start a car and I would start my car for an hour before and, and all stuff, I would have been like, yeah, right. It's my dream that someday you know, someday, like, quick, everybody wakes up, and and obviously it's, yeah, it's happening gradually, but everybody's conscious, and everybody's doing their own part. And man, in 20 years, like, how much better the air and everything would be if that happens. But at the same time, we're gonna keep going the way that we are, and then you know what? We're doing stuff to a world and stuff, and we're not making change or anything. And all our money is not going to change a thing in this world. It's not going to affect, it's not going to help us. Because now we'll be the one suffering, and we're not going to know how to act. Because all those years, we act like we're spoiled, we're spoiled, we're spoiled. We're not making change and stuff, and eventually we're going to pay for it. And that's the nature of things. I mean, what, I'm going to be the richest guy in the cemetery when I die? Like, nobody's gonna remember me. What are you gonna remember? I beat up a lot of people. I, maybe I won the Stanley Cup. Who cares? What have you done with that notoriety? God gave you a chance to be in the NHL. What have you done with the impact that you could have had in the society? That's how people remember you. That's how people respect you. Not by how many goals you scored and stuff. That's not important. Because hockey players or any other athletes, they're 
people like just any other people they're not any better than the guy next to you the guy walking right here or the guy working at the dollar store whatever we're all the same and if the guy at the dollar store does more in a society than the hockey player does he's a bigger and better person than you are because you're just and like you're a toy you're a game you know you you're you're just entertainment for them I want to be a person of impact that makes change for the society for the better. Everywhere I've played, that's all I've been, and I'm always going to be this way and stuff because that's what's important. That's what counts in life. Thanks for listening to the Corporate Nights podcast. This interview was conducted by Toby Heaps. Music by Cooper Moore, Nicolas Bernier, and Cedric Russell. I'm John Eric Lepano. For more podcasts, please visit www.corporatenights.ca slash podcast.